remembrance that is well beloved within the known world and hearts beyond. And so well, my story will concern the creation of this beverage and its love, thank you, Lord, and the process whereby it is known to us all. Now, in a small valley surrounded by great rolling hills and green woods, there was a jolly barony. The people lived merrily and well amongst their farms and fields and did make great rejoicings at the slightest propagation. A litter of kittens, the dropping of a new cap, or a new variety of cheese curd could send them dancing into the streets wearing cowbell garlands and setting fire to piles of recyclable parchment. Though they had many noble fighters among their numbers and dearly loved tourneys and lists, these were an agrarian people, and therefore their main affections lay towards feasting. Plentiful feasts had they of such variety and scope as would cause great gastrointestinal disorders that mystified physicians and barbers for miles around. Yet if they loved the fruits of their fields and dairies well, they loved the fruits of their granaries even better. Beer was there in great store, for except the occasional wine, usually discouraged, as winers are never pleasant, there was little else besides water and a rather unfortunate attempt at fermenting sour milk which nonetheless was useful as a paint thinner and health drink. <laughs> now, although the people on the whole were satisfied, they began to wish for some variety. Such was their growing unrest that they sent a village elder to their chief brewer to request of him an ease to their increasing discontent and sobriety. The chief brewer was a stout hale fellow who loved his hops and yeast with such a passion that never did he travel without a sprig of hops in his hat, and being of Polish extraction, a long and painful process involving bulbs and screwing, he was known as Bruski. When he heard of the people's plight, his heart was moved, and he resolved to aid them. During the long and dreary months of winter, he toiled and labored over his vats and tubing. The beers of onions and garlic were popular, but they needed a peppermint schnapps chaser. His attempts at creating milk brews curdled the palate, and his beer and fruit cooler simply left everyone cold. As the winter wore on and the patients wore thin, the brewer became increasingly troubled and sad. After all, it was his good name as a chief brewer that had earned him so much respect and reverence, and to lose his reputation to this dilemma sat heavily on his soul, the dilemma having nearly as high a cholesterol count as the rest of the barony. One day, as the spring came slipply, slipping craftily in behind winter's back and stealthily spread her warmth over the frozen ground, the brewer went to the fields to sit in the warming earth and meditate on his task. He sat racking his brains and occasionally thumb-screwing them, and so still was his ponderous form that a passing pea espied his sprig of hops and drew near to the tempting nosegay. The brewer woke from his reverie with a startled snore as the bee settled on the brim of his hat and began to circle the cluster of hops. Fearfully, he raised his hand and then struck at the insect. When he regained consciousness, the brewer examined his hand, and as he viewed the splayed remains of the flat little creature, a thought stung at his numbed mind. Of course, cried the happy brewer, it will be as the very nectar of the gods themselves. And with great thundering shouts of triumph, the brewer ran home to his vat to begin afresh upon his purpose. Gathering honey from his neighbor's beehives, he brewed and pollinated far into the night. One morning, as the dawn arose in gilded splendor over the greenwood hills, the brewer staggered forth from his pumpkin hovel, it having a terrible yeast infection, and in his trembling hand he carried a bottle, its frothing contents gleaming like new spun gold. In weary and triumphant pride, Bruski presented his creation to the village elder. The elder, remembering the previous concoctions he had been subjected to, gingerly accepted the flask and cautiously removed the stopper. He took a hesitant sniff and smiled. He took a delicate swig, and his roomy eyes glistened with joyous tears. He took another not quite so delicate chug, and in his reeny tenor piped out, just the finest stuff that has ever been made. Unfortunately, however, having a horrendously goaty Scottish accent, it came out made. Thus, on that balmy spring morning, there came a drink to the merry peasants of that little barony, and great and drunken were the rejoicings, and massive were the haunches of bovines and trenchers of fried cheese curds and pretzels eaten that day. <laughs> Amongst them all stood the brewer, beaming lustily, singing, If a body needs a body, swinging down some rye, if the body gets pissed, which body is left to drink it dry? 